Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast. Today, we have a very special episode for you all today. We have the wonderful Andrea Alaniz with us here today. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So happy that you are finally able to be on the L7C Podcast in our end-of-year podcast. One of our goals was to have more female representation on our podcast because currently only Chelsea is the only female in the rotation. And they asked me about you and I said, we're working to get you in. And here you are on your first episode. So, Andrew, before we dive into what we're talking about, why don't you just give a little brief introduction on who you are? My name is Andrea Alanis. I'm actually from South Texas, living here in Columbus for couple months been um, living in Mansfield before that and before that even a little place called Tiffin if you know where that is that's unfortunate if you don't probably best you it stays that way um but I actually came to Ohio for college and I've just stayed here um to work and that's actually how I met you yeah and it's it's been a great relationship ever since and one of the things that brought us together besides the job that we work in is our love of anime Mm -hmm. so andrea first off like what got you into anime growing up i really have to say that i just always enjoyed cartoons like even just normal cartoons and i was young enough that i didn't really see the difference between watching um powerpuff girls and watching sailor moon dragon ball dragon ball z like it was It was all animated, and I understand there's that argument that it's all anime. Anything Mm -hmm. that's animated is anime, but there's that distinction for some people, so that's why I wanted to throw that out there. But I just, particularly with Japanese anime or international anime, I liked the art style. It was just very pretty, Um, especially with, like, Sailor Moon. That was the one that I really followed as I got older, and when I realized I never finished it um, in middle school... I went back and rewatched the entire thing, even the seasons that hadn't been translated into English. And then from there, that was around the same time that Naruto came out and all that good stuff. So it just steadily built throughout my life. And then you name things like Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon and you just named Naruto. So what anime are you into? Like, what are some of your favorites? What do you look for when you're looking for an anime to watch? Are there certain traits you look for? I'm not quite sure. I've just kind of run into these anime kind of by accident, kind of it was on and I started watching it, especially when I was younger. But I've noticed lately that if I'm not really into the art style, I don't really want to watch it. Or if the um, the plot isn't engaging right away, like I've watched The Promise in Neverland and I really like it now. But I struggled with the first couple episodes getting into it, so... I don't know. I just watch the ones that I kind of get into right away and can find a connection with right away. So you you grew up in Texas, mm-hmm. as you said earlier. And when you were watching anime growing up, did you feel like there was a stigma around girls watching and liking anime? Did you feel like you had to hide it from your like? Your friend groups, I don't know if you had a more female friend group or a male friend group or either, or did you feel like you had to hide that because you didn't want to get picked on or things like that? So, like, when I was really young, obviously everybody loved Pokemon. We all Mm -hmm. had the cards. It didn't matter, male, female, we all loved Pokemon. But then once we got, like, into later elementary school, into middle school, it definitely kind of became even the guys wouldn't admit that they watched anime. Um, So I feel like there was a period of time where anime in general just wasn't cool even for guys to admit, or if they did, they were definitely that group of kids that people picked on. So as I got older into more high school, I kind of opened up more to my male friends about it because I knew they were watching it, but I never really said anything to my female friends because I had just assumed they didn't because it was, it didn't seem to be like a girl thing to do. So I just never brought it up with them. What about going forward in college, grad school? Did you ever find any group of female friends who you were able to tell watch like anime or you were they were okay with watching anime? I actually didn't find a friend group that did. 
I did. I have told my friends about it, and like my best friend in the world, I love her. She is not a fan, which surprises me because she and I are like opposite. Mm-hmm. She play, She loves and plays video games. I don't. Mm-hmm. I love and watch anime. <laughs> she doesn't. Mm-hmm. So it's more that I have friends, female friends that don't watch it but can appreciate my love for it. Um, so at this point, most of my friends that I talk to about anime are guys. And just going off of that, just. I had a conversation um, last week, and we talked about how it's hard to find girls who are, well, open about, like, anime watching and, like, things like that. Do you think just because they're afraid they're going to get made fun of or, like, because it's hard if you don't, like, connect with someone's like, hey, do you watch Yu-Gi-Oh? And they're like, oh, that cartoon, and then it's, like, instantly. Mm Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a large enough, like, female friend group to really say, like, if they're, like, timid about coming out about it. I do feel like there's just still a general stigma as, like, anime is something that only kids should watch. Um, there's also kind of that confusion about that line that I mentioned earlier where one of my other friends, she loves Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. Loves it. And her husband likes anime, but she won't watch anime with him because it's not in English. And so mm. that, that seems to just kind of rub her the wrong way. <laughs> but she knows a lot of other fem- females that watch anime that have been trying to get her into it. So it's, it's weird. It's like some potential personal hang-ups about it. But I think there are more women that like anime than it seems. Especially since if you go on Instagram on the For You page and you... <laughs> Like a lot of anime pages, they're there. And you did say, you talked about your guy group um, that you, that they watch anime with. Do you feel like now guys have warmed up to girls liking anime because of, you just brought up the Instagram, um, women doing the cosplays of certain female anime characters and the things of like fan service and things like that. Has that opened guys more into loving girls who love anime? I don't know if that's what it is or if it's become more mainstream that to watch anime that it's now like, oh, this is just something we both enjoy. It's out there. It's almost a cool thing now to watch anime, especially certain types of them. So it's just kind of more out there and more just in general, like if people like it, it's something more they connect on rather than you kind of hide it. And if you happen to connect on it, good for you. But typically. I think with women, too, um, and now this day and age, how anime and obviously like comics and stuff have become pop culture, everyone in the world knows who Kim Kardashian is. And I think it was about two, three years ago, she posted a picture on Instagram and Twitter. She had pink hair and she called herself Sakura. And I, she's a big name. So then everyone's like, oh, Kim Kardashian likes anime. That's that's cool for all of us to like anime, I remember Britney Spears posted a picture of her son drawing a picture of Goku. He was like, well, Britney Spears knows anime, so I feel like now it's more accepted in the mainstream, obviously. And now you have celebrities who I don't personally know if they like anime or whatnot, but using it to their advantage to get more fans, more clicks, things like that. When I brought up like fan service, because... Andrea, what is fan service? Oh, goodness. So fan service is any kind of particular scenes or situations, um, even the way a character can be drawn um, that emphasizes their sex appeal, I guess, Mm -hmm. particular features, um, and just kind of can fit into certain personality tropes, um, including like the innocent one, the one who seems Mm -hmm. um, to put herself more out there. And obviously the trope, even in mainstream media, about, like, the beautiful girl who doesn't know she's beautiful, Mm -hmm. that whole thing. Um, (laughs) And with fan service specifically, in anime that I've watched, um, it's generally always, like, the big boobs falling on top of a dude somehow into some sort of semi-sexual position Mm -hmm. um, that in real life probably wouldn't happen and definitely would not happen as much in (laughs) real life as it does in animes. Do you feel with, like, fan service 
Like when you're watching it, are you okay watching it? Do you feel like some anime should cut it back a little bit? Are you just like, mm, it's just whatever? I think it depends on the anime for sure. Because like, particularly with the situations where the girl falls on a guy into some sort of kind of risque position, mm-hmm. that I've noticed that happens more in the like slice of life, the romance animes. And it's just like, this is cliche, guys. We can do better. Like, why, why do we need this? I mean, one of my favorite animes right now, My Hero, I mean, people could say that my favorite character, Momo, is complete fan service. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see that argument and I get that. But it's also semi-explained as like her cost, her hero costume, especially is semi-explained that if her skin's not exposed, she can't properly create the things that she's trying to. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, that is just kind of like a a bonus for the male gaze, but at the same time, it's also kind of out there as necessary and it's not overplayed. Like anytime she's somewhat potentially exposed, they always have her facing away. Whereas other authors potentially or studios would have her facing camera Mm -hmm. (laughs) while that's happening. So um, I think it just depends in general, if it's happening too much for me, then it's probably an anime that I, I'm not going to watch. Now, you brought up uh, Momo from My Hero. And I would say also, I guess someone that everyone would know if they watch anime would be someone like Tsunade. Mm -hmm. And you see her build and her age of 50-something years old and the way she's built. And then you bring up Momo, who's 15, 16, and the way she's built. Do you think that the fan service is also putting those same type of beauty look pressures on girls the way in America, Instagram and social media and all those things do. Because if every anime you see and every 15 year old looks like she could be on the cover of Maxim and then you look at yourself and you can't, does it, could that affect you in the same way that we talk about models affecting girls in the United States. Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, especially since I watched Sailor Moon as a little kid, one of the biggest things that ran in my head was like, okay, which Sailor Scout did I look like? Mm-hmm. Because they were all so pretty. And then mm-hmm. I always wanted in my head to look like the prettiest one, but I knew I didn't. Realistically, could not happen. Because it's a cartoon, I feel like there's not as much pressure as magazines and media because those are actual, quote, real people in those photos of course photoshop but still um at least with anime you know it's somebody's idealized version of Mm -hmm. people but you would still like momo in particular and i forget the redheaded girl's name from class b um the one who did the internship with the big sister of class b yes the one that did the internship with momo Mm -hmm. they're both beautiful they're both like bustier very Mm -hmm. slender And so it's like, it almost could be a real body type for people. And you would want, some people would want to look like that, but they just don't. So it can be kind of triggering to only see idealized body types like that. Because especially with the female tropes, it's always slender big breasts or slender small breasts. And they're very self-conscious about having small breasts. Mm -hmm. So it just... It's always on the narrative for the female characters, it seems like, either actually spoken on or just kind of implied. And I agree with the thing about how they're drawn and the people, models, Photoshop, and all their people. But I guess if you have that fifth, we talked about Comic-Con, things like that, dressing up, things like that. If you have that 15-year-old girl who's at home watching My Hero and she wants to cosplay, and she's not in the same build as those people. I guess that's the people I'm looking about for, because it's like, if you look at my, and it's not even just Momo, if you look at every girl in that show who's shown, who's had a prominent or semi-prominent role, has fit the two tropes that you've said. Mm -hmm. Either slender, the big breasts, or the small breasts, and like insecure about it. So it's like those people who are watching, it's like, well, I can't cosplay as Momo because I'm not built like that and like things like that. So I feel like body positivity movement, things like that. I wonder down the road, is someone going to make a 
anime about body positivity because I feel like that's the next step in bringing more people into anime. And it's the same with the guys, too. Not everyone is going to look like Goku. I mean, it's cool to strive to look like that, but not to the point where you're getting surgeries or, like, from the girl's side, like, breast enlargements, things like things like that. And then you brought up My Hero, which is one of your favorite shows. And what Andrea is going to be doing on the L7C podcast is she is going to be going over My Hero. We're going to have a whole bunch of My Hero Academia episodes going forward when the new season comes out. Uh, having episodes about how we got here. Asking Andrea who her top 10 favorite heroes are or her top 10 least favorite. I know who her least favorite is because he's actually my second favorite. So that will be an enter- entertaining time. And just talking about how she got into it, like my hero and how popularities rose and it came out at the right time. And that's what she's going to be doing going forward. Andrea, is there anything else that you want to say? talk about i mean i can talk about anime forever i mean we've had long conversations about anime before and i'm sure that is going to continue even outside of this podcast Mm -hmm. but just wrapping up i guess is i'm very excited for the new season and i'm excited to talk to you about it probably on air off air um i'm just really excited to see what happens because i don't read the manga so i have no idea what's coming do you read manga for, have you read any mangas of your oh, favorite anime before? Oh, yes, I have. So <laughs> in that time period between middle school and college, when I kind of like put anime kind of on the back burner, <laughs> I don't know why, but I started reading manga online instead. Okay. And so I actually haven't watched this anime, but I read the manga for the Maid-sama anime. So I already know that entire show. <laughs> um, and the other one that I'm watching right now, that's a remake, but that I read previously is Fruits Basket, which is an anime I want you to watch. I know that's maybe not your flavor, but I I I want you to try it. I'll try it. Well, I was about to say I'll try anything once, but that's not true. I will try certain things once and then go from there. But also, you brought up Sailor Moon and The Prettiest and you trying to be them, but you which think you're doing yourself a disservice. So going forward, like from there, and then you brought up Momo, who was your favorite on My Hero. So who right now, or who's your all-time favorite anime character, and why? Is it from a looks perspective, or is it because of their independent-isms? I feel a little on the spot here. <laughs> well, that's what we do sometimes here. So I always have a hard time choosing a favorite anything, so I do apologize You can give five. for that. Okay, so my top five, I'll go female since we're kind of going with that. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, I love Serena from Sailor Moon. Okay. Um, because she was the main character. She was, ugh, she was the best. Mm-hmm. Of course, rewatching it, she's a little bit of a crybaby, but considering that personality, like similarity, I'll just overlook that. I love Momo. Love Hinata, and Fruits Basket, Toru. Ugh, she has my heart, and probably the other one that people might not know. Her name is Amuhima Wari, I believe it is. Um, it's been a long time since I read that uh, manga, but it's uh, from Shugo Chara. Okay. And basically, it's a magical girl um, story in which people's kind of desires in their heart could birth characters. Mm-hmm. And she was a special situation where she actually had three different like personality types come out mm-hmm. from that, and the transformations were in line with those personalities. And she kind of struggled with who people wanted her to be, how people saw her versus who she really was. So that was just something I really connected with, especially in middle school. And I still can kind of connect with that. So she's, I love her, but people don't really know who she is. So then you said your, those are your five favorite, who would be like your least five favorite female anime characters? If you even have five that you don't like. I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know if I have five. (laughs) That I don't like, but I watched Dragon Ball, then I watched a little bit of Dragon Ball Z, and I did not like what they did with Chi-Chi in Dragon Ball Z. Okay. The overbearing mother thing, you didn't like it. Yeah, I just, and I also felt like she was a little unfair to Goku, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, again, he was not the best dad. Totally get that. But, like, (laughs) 
there were just times it seemed like I didn't like the fact that their marriage seemed like he just kind of was in it just to be in it. And then mm-hmm. she was, uh, yeah, I just did not like that dynamic. Um, hmm. Who else? I don't know. I guess there aren't that many different female characters that I've come across that I just despise. Actually, I take that back. There's one that I absolutely loathe. However, for anybody that's going to watch Fruits Basket, I can't say who it is because it'd be a spoiler. Okay. So, if you want to know who that is, you can watch it. I I will find out. But there, I guess there's always a woman in anime who's very controversial fan base wise who some people love it a lot of people despise and we talked about the show a little bit because you said one of your top five was Hinata and I think that person of this generation is Sakura Haruno and you didn't have her in your top five least liked but what do you think about Sakura so I just I don't know Because when I first started watching Naruto, when it first came out, I was in middle school and I was one of those kids that would have crushes that were never returned. So I very much identified with that in both her and Hinata in the Naruto series. (laughs) And I definitely had a crush on Sasuke when I watched it. So, hmm, understandable. (laughs) But going forward, it's just, it became, it just seemed like too much. And I've read the author's kind of like explanation why that kind of their love story was supposed to be the love that endures. But there are just some lines that were crossed in there that for her to still want to be with him and love him. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> just, it was, for me, it just was a little too long and a little too domestic violence <laughs> involved. Just no, no. But I can't say that I hate her. Like, I, tr- I truly don't hate her. I do laugh at the memes. I do laugh at the jokes because I get it. But at the same time, I don't despise her. Any other things you want to hit on before your first episode is done? I don't. Any shout outs to anyone? It's your first episode. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I have anything else i'm sure if you come up with another question i'll give you an answer but i think i think that's it for the first time thank you for having me no problem and with that being said thank you andrea for being on the l7c podcast bringing more women representation to the brand thank you everyone who listens on apple Podcasts, youtube spotify google Podcasts, all the we appreciate your support Andrea will be back and she is going to be talking some My Hero and we're going to try and get Andrea's top 10 favorite characters off My Hero Academia. That will be her next episode. So be on the lookout for that. We may also try and get Andrea in our new series that we're starting. If you haven't listened to Cedric's Naruto one at the end, You heard us talking about the what if battles. So we're going to be bringing that next month and we're going to be doing crazy what if battles, just randomly picking them. I know I ran some by Andrea at the office and she was she had to take her glasses off to really think about some of them. So hopefully we can have her on there as well so we can have a woman's input on that. And with that being said, thank you, everyone, for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.